Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tan. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to downgrade macOS Big Sur from 11.6 to 11.2.3 on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So the main reason that most people want to do this is to re-enable sideloading. So macOS 11.2.3 is the last version that can allow sideloading without the developer's permission. And this is the last version that allows that to work. And we have some updated instructions because the 11.2.3 link is no longer valid. So I'm going to be showing you how to do this today. So in the link in the description, I'm going to show you this archive.org link. Somebody has uploaded macOS 11.2.3 here. And all you need to do is click on the link and then scroll down to this page. This is a legit upload from Chrono Kernel. All we need to do is select one of these download options on the right. So on the right hand side here, we have the macOS disk image. So if I click this, this is going to download the 11.4 gigabyte file. So you'll actually find that the archive.org website doesn't actually allow very speedy downloads. So I'm going at 260 kilobytes per second and it says it's going to take 11 hours. So I'm going to cancel this actually because this is going to take too long. What I'm going to do is to use the torrent file instead. So if you haven't used BitTorrent before, all you have to do is follow the link in the top right hand corner of the screen now or follow the link in the description for my quick video tutorial on how to install Qubit Torrent. So once the Qubit Torrent application has been installed, all we need to do is go back to here and then we're going to download the torrent file. So I'm going to save this torrent file here. We can actually open it direct with Qubit Torrent, but I'm going to save it first just to show you how it works exactly. Then I'm going to go to my downloads folder and then double click the .torrent file. And this has automatically opened up my Qubit Torrent. If you don't have Qubit Torrent loaded up already, you can also open Qubit Torrent and then click here, add torrent file, and then select the .torrent file we downloaded from the archive.org website. And once we have this window open, this means that we have the correct torrent file loaded. The main file that we're interested in is this .dmg, which is 11.38 gigabytes. I'm going to put this in my downloads folder and press OK. So as you can see here, we're getting about 900, 1 megabytes per second of speed. So this is going to work much faster. So this is going to be a much better option than downloading the disk image directly. The more people that download and see this file, the faster this will be for everyone else. So I do encourage everyone to see this file once you finish downloading it. So once the file has completed downloading, it'll say here that we're seeding. That's because we're no longer downloading. So I'm going to control click on here, click open destination folder and I'm going to open up the DMG file. So that's the largest file in this torrent. I'm going to open that up and mount this DMG. So once the DMG is mounted, we have the install macOS Big Sur application here, which I'm going to double click on. So now all we need to do is press continue, press agree and agree. And then I'm going to ask it to install on the internal solid state drive. This is going to overwrite version 11.6 entirely. We don't actually have to do a format or reinstall. If you go to macOS Monterey, the beta, for example, and you want to go back to 11.2.3, you have to wipe the computer. But here we are doing a straight downgrade from 11.6 to 11.2.3. So what we need to do is click continue, type in the password for your computer, unlock, and then let that complete. So just be aware that when you do downgrade macOS, that certain applications and settings might be moved to the relocated items if they're not compatible with the earlier version of macOS Big Sur. So just be aware, you should probably do a backup before you do this process. There might be important settings and files that you may lose in this process. It's very unpredictable. This is an inline downgrade. Things which are lost should be moved into the relocated items folder when the computer restarts eventually. So we're now ready to press the restart button. So just press the blue button to restart your computer. So this computer has now restarted and we're now on 11.2.3. And what you'll notice is that if you didn't already have a relocated items folder already, then this folder will now appear and this will contain basically any configurations from 11.6 which are not compatible with 11.2.3. In this case, this is just a in this case, this is just a settings file here. There's nothing else at the moment which is relevant. So don't worry too much about this. I'm just going to close this now. So the next stage now is to download an actual application in order to sideload it. So I'm going to use the iMazing method. I'm going to leave a link to this tutorial video on how to install iMazing for the last time that I did this on Genshin Impact. Or you can click on the top right hand side of the screen now in order to be taken to that particular video. So once we've installed iMazing, I'm just going to open it up now. Now I've got my iMazing application open. I'm just going to continue the trial. So the free version of this application is all that we need. We don't need to pay for this application in order to pull the apps that we need for sideloading. So I'm going to select the device that the application's on. So in this case, I want to get Genshin Impact from my phone. I'm going to scroll down here to the app section. So what we need to do now is to click on Manage Apps. And then this is going to give us a list of all the apps on the iPhone. I'm going to type in the word Genshin. And we have two versions here for some reason. We have the old version and the newer version here. 
what I'm gonna do is if we don't have this downloaded already, then we can click on the cloud icon with the arrows pointing downwards. I already have this downloaded. So what we're gonna do is to control click on this row and then click export.ipa. Then we're gonna put this on the desktop. So once that's extracted, I'm gonna double click on Genshin Impact 2.1.0.ipa and it's gonna install it for us in the applications folder. So once that's installed, it's gone into our applications folder automatically. I'm gonna double click on this now to open it. Here it's giving us the notifications menu and the actual game itself. So in 11.2.3, we should be able to full size this. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Firstly, we're gonna log in. And once we're logged into our account, we can press start to begin the game. So once the files have downloaded, we can just go ahead and click tap to begin in order to enter the game world. So the main thing that you wanna do is you wanna be able to pair a controller because we don't have mouse and keyboard support. What we can do is click on the menu here and then go to settings. And once we've paired a Bluetooth controller, I'm using my Xbox One wireless controller. We can go to the control type here and then click controller here. Now I have controller set up at the moment and then I'm just going to quit out of this menu just to show you that this does actually work. I'm just demonstrating now we're on macOS 11.2.3. It is the 19th of September and we're running Genshin Impact 2.1.0. So once we full screen the game, you'll see that we're actually able to play this fully. It's in a four by three aspect ratio, which is kind of the iPad aspect ratio. This is the kind of the option that we have at the moment to be able to play this game. So I'm just gonna close this now. If you're also interested in how to get this game working with keyboard and mouse support on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, then please follow the link to my video tutorial, which is gonna be in the description or the top right hand corner of the screen now. This is using the method for play cover, which is an alternate method, which should work on the latest version of macOS Big Sur and also macOS Monterey as well. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.